Concerns about the misuse of Facebook data went global today, with more unsettling revelations about how much private information may have been accessed. And for the first time, Canadians learned what that meant in this country. The social media giant says more than 600,000 Canadians may have had their data improperly shared with data analysis firm Cambridge Analytica. A portion of the 87 million users affected worldwide, a big jump from the 50 million originally reported. But today the story goes beyond that. One UK company and its connection to the Brexit campaign, Facebook has been under a much broader attack for failing to protect profile data that many users don't even seem to know is open to scrutiny. So I guess they know where I went to school, like city, like where I'm from, and then like where I work. That's a little bit much. Yeah. Would you change any of that? I would definitely change some of that. At this Toronto coffee shop, many are asking just how much Facebook knows about them. I don't want just like my information just being like sold out there and I don't know what it's being used for. Questioning the track record on privacy and protecting users' data. Uh, you know, they need to own it. When there's a data breach, we need to know about it. Just like if there's an oil spill, I should be able to know that information. It shouldn't be behind closed doors. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg admitted as much today that he has to do better. It's clear now that we didn't do enough. We didn't focus enough on preventing abuse and thinking through how people could use these tools to do harm as well. And, and that was a huge mistake. It was, it was my mistake. It's about the integrity of our democratic process. and it's, it's about Canadian Christopher Wiley blew the whistle well. on just how Cambridge Analytica was involved. He revealed to CBC News, The Guardian and The New York Times that it built a database of tens of millions of profiles used to try and influence elections in the U.S. and U.K. There's a, you know, a potential for an existential crisis in, in Facebook uh, because people are realizing that you've got a company that sort of has a problem with the fact that its entire business model it revolves around pers the use of personal data. Uh, we're not particularly surprised that Canadians, even a large number of Canadians, uh, was affected. Canada's privacy watchdog launched an investigation last month into the data leak and whether federal privacy laws were broken. Our investigators uh, met with Facebook at the time. Uh, they've had a sort of first meeting. And he will probably have more questions for Facebook after Zuckerberg acknowledged that most of its 2 billion users should take this note. Malicious actors could have scraped their public profile information. It, it is reasonable to expect that, that at some point in the last several years, um, someone has probably accessed um, your public information. Matthew Braga is the CBC's senior technology reporter. Okay, Matthew, what's the problem here? <laughs> so Facebook had this feature until today uh, where you could search for user profiles using someone's phone number or their email address. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook described it as, you know, a helpful feature, I guess, for a while, uh, but one that could actually be abused. And so it turned out there were these uh, malicious actors that they called them, we don't know who exactly, uh, who were just entering in, you know, phone number after phone number, email after email from all these different IP addresses, using it to pull up all these Facebook profiles and then scraping all of the publicly available information on those right. profiles. Uh, for what purpose? We don't know. Okay, now I didn't scrape data, but I've used that to find people <laughs> yeah. before. So how are they fixing it or changing it? Uh, so very simple, they are just getting rid of the feature. It is gone. Okay. Um, it's interesting though, I mean, this all came about because Facebook, of course, has been doing all of these audits of its services, uh, the way they work in the light of the, the Cambridge Analytica kind mm -hmm. of data scandal. And uh, it's interesting that they they didn't really realize the scope of this, uh, abuse of this feature, until they started kind of poking around <laughs> how, how developers and others were using the service. And so uh, it's kind of just the way that they've shut things off. Okay, so they, they say they're gonna fix this. Where does this leave users? People like you and I who are ostensibly the people still on Facebook because some are no longer on Facebook. Uh, so I mean, when we talk about scraping, right, it's important to know what exactly we're talking about. Um, you know, for a while on Facebook, anything uh, that you put on your profile, where you went to school, where you worked, uh, your friends, your likes, your interests, yep. you could make all of that public. And so all of that could be potentially um, fair game. And so essentially what uh, users can do is they can kind of go back and sort of take a look at what they 
they have made public, what they've made available, maybe claw some of that back. And so that is in addition to some of the other changes that I think Facebook has been trying to roll out um, uh, or has been aiming to roll out around uh, limiting the types of information that developers can access, cutting off other types of things uh, like, you know, where you go to school and mm -hmm. things like that if developers ask for it. Try to so take if they've made changes with developers and how much apps can take, mm -hmm. people, Canadians, should probably go back and have a look at what they have exposed and decide whether they're comfortable with it or not. It, it's certainly one uh, approach they can take, but it's also this larger question, too, of, you know, is the onus really on users to be uh, taking this into their own hands, or is there a larger kind of question, a larger debate about the way that Facebook is designed and the choices that it encourages mm -hmm. people to make? Uh, clearly, uh, some of that information being abused as a result of that here. Okay. Matthew Brega, always good to have you here. Thank you. Thanks, Rosie.